everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back today with another bead weaving basics video to show you how to make this quick and easy spiral seed bead rope. I've got several different examples here to show you how color can affect how this looks. The top and the middle example have just two different colors of seed beads and the bottom one incorporates three colors. And keep in mind, no matter which style you choose to do, it's really interesting when you choose two contrasting colors because one of them is going to form the slimmer inner band of beads and the other color is going to form that thicker, wider band that goes around the outside. So it makes for a really neat effect when you choose two different colors that stand apart from one another. There are lots of variations on this spiral rope, but to keep it simple today, we're just going to be using two different colors of the same size 11 seed beads. Once you have this stitch down, you can definitely get fancy with it and use all sorts of different beads on the outside. And you can even change up the size of the beads on the inside spiral if you want. I also wanted to show you a couple different examples of how you can finish a spiral rope like this. The very bottom piece is a wrap bracelet that'll wrap around the wrist three times and then I used a check glass button to act as a clasp that you can insert into that herringbone stitch loop at the other side. So that's just one way you can end something like this, especially if you want to do a wrap bracelet. In the center I used some wire and fed that through either end of the beadwork after I finished it off. Added some additional spacer beads at the end and created wire wrap loops on the other side of the beads and attached my clasp that way. And then today, the example that is on the top, we're gonna to be making that exact stitch and finishing it off in that manner with those cone-shaped metallic end findings. I think with the spiral rope in particular, the tapered end of these cone bead ends are really perfect because with the spiral stitch, you don't end with a completely flat area of beadwork. It kind of tapers off. So the end will fit perfectly in a cone shape like that. To make these spiral ropes and to find all sorts of findings to finish them off, you can find everything you need at bbcraft.com. And I have a coupon that you can use. It's OPAL10, O-P-A-L-10. That'll save you 10% off your entire purchase at bbcraft. And they do offer free international shipping on all orders over $25. They now have a growing selection of Japanese seed beads, which I highly recommend checking out the Miyuki or the Toho brands in particular because they're very uniform and you'll end up with a nice uniform rope like this. So I'll leave the link to BB Craft as well as that coupon code and the specific links to products that I'm using today right down below. So be sure to check for those in the description section. And for my beading thread today, I'll be using the 6 pound test 0 .006 inch diameter fire line and a size 11 beading needle. So first we're going to get started. I'm going to show you how to go about creating this spiral rope stitch using two different colors. And then I'll show you the example of the ending component, at which point we'll use one of those cone shaped ending findings and a head pin in order to secure that. So at this time, just go ahead and gather up your materials and thread your beading needle with a comfortable length of beading thread. Then we will jump into this tutorial. All right, so as you can see with this two color rope, we'll be using the beige for that slimmer inner stripe and we'll be using the turquoise for the thicker outer stripes. And keep in mind, whatever color you're gonna be using for your outer stripes, you'll probably need about four times the quantity of seed beads as the inner stripe color. You're welcome to start this out with a stop bead on your thread if you'd like to. I'm just going to go ahead and start without it. Once we get going, the beads will be pretty securely in place on one end. And you'll just keep repeating the same steps over and over again and create the length that you want depending on what you want your finished piece to be. So with my needle, I'm going to pick up first four of the inside slimmer band color. Then pick up three of your outer color. Go ahead and pull these down to the tail portion of your thread. You can leave yourself about six inches back there. And then take your needle and sew through those first four seed beads again. And pull, and you end up with something that looks like this. 
And that is our first little band of turquoise seed beads that's gonna surround our beige beads. And now it's a matter of repeating the same step over and over again, your entire length. And that is to pick up one of your inner color and then three of your outer color. Go ahead and pull these down to your work. And then sew up through the previous three beige seed beads plus the new one you just added. So you're going through four of those seed beads and pull everything together. And you end up with something like this. Now as we go, those little bands of turquoise seed beads are gonna start to sit next to each other and spiral up those beige seed beads. So just keep going and you'll see that pattern come to life. And after each of these new additions, just make sure you pull everything nice and tight. So once again, pick up one of your inner seed beads and three of the outer, and go ahead and pull those down. And then go through the previous three seed beads plus the new one that you just added. So you're going through four. And pull and scrunch everything together and you can see how those stripes are starting to stagger around. So let's do a couple more together. One inner and three outer colors. Pull them down and go through the four inner color seed beads and pull. One inner and three of the outer color. Pull them down. Go through those four of that inner color. Three plus the new one. And pull. So just keep repeating that same simple step over and over again, picking up one and then three, and then going up through the four of the inner color, pulling everything tight. And once you have the length that you want, we'll take a look at this option for ending your spiral rope. And welcome back. Once you have the length that you want, you can then just finish off your beadwork by making a couple of half hitch knots. I'm gonna go under this thread bridge between those two colors and then go through the loop that was formed and pull. So I just am trying to secure my thread at this point. I'm gonna go through a few more beads to try to hide my thread a little bit more. Go under that thread bridge and pass through the loop. Try to go through a few more beads. And I'm just gonna follow those beige beads just a little bit more. And I'll probably make one more half hitch knot right there. Go through that loop. And then sew through just a few more beads before you trim off your excess. Trim it off right there. And when you're considering the end finding, I found that the opening of about five millimeters was perfect for the 11-0 size beaded rope. You could probably get away with an opening of six millimeters, but anything bigger than that might leave you with too much wiggle room and you want it to taper right to the size of that rope. You can of course use shorter end caps as well and they don't have to be tapered i just happen to have these and like i said you can see the taper that happens at the end of the spiral rope and it works out well with that shape 
I also have a head pin and you're welcome to use just a segment of wire for this step if you'd like to as well. Since this already has that little bit of a loop there, I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and just twist that open because I want that to catch onto the beadwork. And I'm gonna look at the end of this and try to catch the thread under the end of that spiral rope, so somewhere like that. And if you're using a flat piece of wire, you can just use some round nose pliers to curl the end of your wire to catch that section. And then you can either wire wrap it closed or you just take your pliers and twist that closed onto that area and squeeze it tight. So now you have the head pin or wire in place. That's what you're gonna to use to feed on your cone end finding like that. And you're also more than welcome to use a little bit of glue under there if you'd like to, just to add some extra security at the end if you feel more comfortable with that, and also a little bit of extra glue, maybe even around this area where we have added that piece of wire. So just feeding that down as far as it'll go, I'm then gonna make a 90 degree angle with the wire just so that that is held into place. And to match the loop that I have over here, I'm going to trim this back a little bit so I only have more like a half inch of wire hanging out. And then I'll take my round nose pliers and I'm holding them back about halfway from the front, maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna roll that piece of wire into a loop and straighten that out to match the other side. And that loop is going to not only hold this in place, but also give us a spot to add our jump rings and clasp to the end of the beadwork. So as I mentioned before, that is just one way to end this spiral rope. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can be really creative with that, but hopefully this gives you something to go off of, especially if this is a brand new technique for you. One other thing you can do with the wire is you can leave that length longer and you can wrap the wire coiling it around in front of the top of your end finding. That would add even more security. There wouldn't be any way that that would open up. So that's also up to you. At this point, I'm going to pop on a couple of jump rings and a clasp and then I'll be right back and we can admire our work. So that is our completed spiral rope project and then the other two just as inspiration. Keep in mind you'll need to add some additional thread to whatever you used at first probably. And if you wanna branch out with another variation that is very similar to what we just did, consider using two different colors of seed beads on the outer band and instead of picking up three of the same color, pick up three different colors or pick up a pattern of one color, then another, then the first one again to get a similar spiral rope with a different pattern and more colors. So now this necklace is all ready. If I wanted to add a pendant to the center of it, I could do that or just leave it as it is. For only using seed beads, you can create some pretty nice looking pieces just using this technique. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check right down below for links and a full list of materials to the products that you'll need to make something just like this. And check out the materials at bbcraft.com. That link will be down below with that new coupon code OPAL10, O-P-A-L-10, that will save you 10% off your entire purchase there. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my playlist for my other bead weaving basic techniques. Also, be sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here. Feel free to leave a comment down below and share the video with your other beading friends. That's all I have for now. I hope to see you all again real soon. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. Mm -hmm.